You've only got yourself to blame. The fighting stance. Here we go. We get to use Yoi Mia now, right? Oh, we're going to enjoy this one. Pause. Let's dive in slowly, okay? Idle animation. Okay. We got 76, 155 going right here. Profile, birthday. That is June 21st. Just passed. Weapon, Thundering Pulse, the five star weapon. Level 88. Artifacts is a four piece noblesse, interestingly enough. Constellations. The Oris Blaze created. We, we've already. We, we haven't seen this, right? The Oris Blaze created by Ryukin. Saxifrage lasts for an extra four seconds, which I think is her, her, um, that's her ultimate, right? That's her ultimate. Additionally, when an opponent affected by the Oris Blaze is defeated within its duration, Yoimi's attack is increased by 20% for 20 seconds. Okay. Uh, possession of bonfires. When Yoimi is pyro damage, it scores a crit. Yoimi will gain a 25% bonus or pyro damage bonus for six seconds. It can be triggered even when Yoimi is not the active character. So it seems like there's going to be lingering fire effects happening from like our ultimate, maybe. Increases the level of uh, Noabi fire dance by three for Constellation three. When Yoimiya's own Oris Blaze triggers an explosion, uh, Nawabi's Fire Dance cooldown is decreased by 1.2 seconds. So her E, right? Interesting. Constellation 5 is leveling up the ultimate by 3. And then Constellation 6. During Nawabi Fire Dance, the E ability, Yoimiya's normal attacks have a 50% chance of firing an extra kindling arrow that deals 60% of its original damage. This damage is considered normal attack damage. Very interesting, very interesting. And now let's get into the talents. Normal attack, standard. We have kindling arrow damage, 23%. Nawabi fire dance. Yui Mia waves a sparkler and causes a ring of salt petter to surround her. Nawabi and show. Am I saying that correctly? During this time, arrows fired by Yui Mia's normal attack will be blazing arrows, and their damage will be increased and converted to pyro damage. During this time, normal attack, firework flare up will not generate kindling arrows at charge level two. Charge level two? I should have read the charge attack. Apparently, this is different. I thought it would be the standard. All right, normal attack. This is performs a more precise aim shot with, with increased damage. Pretty standard. We have two different charge levels. Charge level one fires off a flaming arrow that deals pyro damage. Straightforward. Charge level two. This is like Ganyu then? Charge level 2 generates a maximum of 3 kindling arrows based on the time spent charging, releasing them as a as part of this aimed shot. Kindling arrows will home in on near home in on nearby opponents, dealing pyro damage like heat seek. Like heat seek. Okay. Um we're reading this. So it says, during this time, normal attack, firework, flare up will not generate kindling arrows at charge level 2. Interesting. So once we hit our E, there's no reason to charge up on... There's no reason to try and charge up on auto attack. It's normally like once you pop your E, you want to auto attack, I think. Auto attack once you hit your E. That's what it seems like. Duration, 10 seconds. Cooldown, 18. So 8 seconds of downtime. Blazing arrow damage as follows. And now we have the ultimate. The attributes right here, skill damage, duration, 10 seconds, cooldown, 5, 15. So 5 seconds of downtime and energy, 60 energy cost. Here we go. Yoi Mia leaps into the air along with her original creation, the Ryukin. Saxifrage. The fire's fourth blazing rockets bursting with surprise that deal AoE pyro damage and mark one of the opponents, or hit opponents, with Oris Blaze. Forest Blaze, all normal, charge, and plunging attacks, elemental skills, and elemental bursts by any party member other than Yoi Mia that hit an opponent marked by the Blaze will trigger an explosion, dealing AoE, pyro damage. When an opponent affected by Oris Blaze is defeated before its duration expires, the effect will pass on to another nearby opponent. What the fuck? So it's gonna keep transferring like a ticking bomb or something, you know? That's ready to just... Exp like explode and if you kill them before it even goes off it'll transfer over like it will go off on someone no matter what right um 
that will inherit the remaining duration. One Aura's Blaze Explosion can be triggered every two seconds. When Yoimi is, when Yoimi is down, Aura's Blaze effects created through her skills will be deactivated. Oh shit, so if you place an effect on someone and then she dies, it gets it goes away. Is that basically what, what it's saying? Alright. Now we have some passive talents. During Nawabi Fire Dance, shots fired from normal attack will increase her power damage by 2% on hit. So just more damage, it seems. The effect lasts for 3 seconds and can have a maximum of 10 stacks? Lasts for 3 seconds and can have a maximum of 10 stacks. I wonder how fast we can attack then. Okay. Um, using the ultimate cause, the nearby party members, not including Yoimi, it's to gain a 10% attack increase for 15 seconds. Additionally, a further attack bonus will be added on bait, will be added on, based on the number of tricks of the troublemaker stacks Yoimi possesses when using her ultimate. Each stack increases its attack bonus by 1%. Hmm, this is, uh, uh, so everything is correlating to like, we got to auto attack. This is auto attack, right? This is like hardcore auto attack, it seems. I don't see like any moments to really want to charge attack here. And then what about the passive talent, the last one? It says, uh, crafts... Wait, when Yomiya crafts decoration, ornaments, and landscape-type furnishings, she has a 100% chance to refine a portion of the materials used. A 100% chance. Decoration, ornament, and landscape-type furnishings? So this is like teapot-related? A 100% chance to refund a portion. Housing meta, it seems. Very interesting. And that's Yomiya. And that is the Oimiya. All right. Character design. Let's try her out now in combat, yeah? Calling card or picture right here. Why does it feel like I'm running in slow motion? <laughs> I don't know why. All right. Let's try our charge. Oh, that's cool. Hold on. Some distance. One, two, three. Boom. All right. I think two of them hit. I tried to miss on purpose to see the homing ability, like how much it homes. You know, like if I do that. Damn! If you try and shoot away from them, it still goes after them. It still hits them. That's cool. All right, charge level one. That was charge level one. They're burning. Nice little explosion. E. Oh, snap. So this lasts 10 seconds. She's like dancing while she attacks. Okay, the auto attacks. And then there's like six seconds of downtime, it seems. Which is then you, when you go back to charge level two. Send all those reactions out, right? Pop the E again, get some distance, and start auto attacking. I never thought auto attacking on a bow user would be so satisfying. The only satisfying bow user to auto attack on with their bow is official for me. With, um, with Oz present, like C1. Ultimate is we place stacks on them, right? We place stacks, or we, we place like a ticking time bomb, and then once we kill them, it'll send off explosions every two seconds, or it can be go set off every two seconds, and then if they die, it'll be transferred to someone else, I think. So if we pop our ult... I can see the curse. We kill them, it transferred to someone else. Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, when does it go off? It's 10 seconds, right? I can't tell if it went off. I killed him. I think I killed him the exact moment it was supposed to go off or something. Wait, I was supposed to swap? It says the plunging attacks, elemental skills by any party members other than Yoimiya that hit an opponent. Oh, that's how we trigger the explosion. That's how we trigger the explosion. So any normal attack, plunge, anything at all will trigger the explosions. And it can be set off every two seconds. Every two seconds. So it seems like once we're in alt phase, once we use our alt, we switch over. She becomes support, right? For other characters. But once we don't have our alt, we can use our E and do just auto attack. Kind of, right? If we really wanted to. What you guys mean check pyro damage? Pyro damage bonus, 0%. Okay. <laughs> Zero percent. Wait, where is my... I don't even know what artifact I'm running right now. Okay. Good one, Mihoyo. Nice one. Nice nice prank. Alright, boys. It's a good thing you're near the water. We got a constant ape going on right here. How do y'all like that? Charge. Aim for the face. Whew. 
Hold on, hold on. Patience. Freeze him up. Switch over. Auto attack. Our way to victory. Wait, we, we don't want to kill him just yet. Kill the little minions first. Save the boss man for last. We're going to mess with him a little bit, right? All right, here we go. Here we go. Gather, gather. Oh! Kill this man. Swap it back. Go up. Ooh, the explosion. I can feel it. 16,000 plus 12,000 explosion damage. That did 28,000 explosion damage. We need more men. Oh, you think Yo and Mia could be great support for Ayaka? Damn. Okay, guys. So that was my first time ever trying out Yoi Mia and getting hands on for this story quest. In the short amount of time, I just wanted to give my feedback and my thoughts regarding everything that I experienced. And uh, I hope this doesn't get any hate. But yes, her auto attacks were fun. It reminded me of like official main DPS with Oz C1 and doing that like machine gun build and the fast attacks, right? But now I'm kind of curious on if I want to roll for Yoi Mia or not for the character. Because personally, just trying this out, and I know it was a brief time and it was just the story quest. Mihoyo kind of screwed her over by giving her no pyro damage bonus and a four piece no bless, right? Uh, even though, like, damage numbers aside, I still felt like Yoi Mia just wasn't that fun, you know? Like, hear me out. The most fun character in Genshin Impact, in my opinion, is Kazuha. Kazuha is the most fun character. Even after I've, I've been playing and trying out Aika for these past few days, I still always lean towards Kazuha. He's still the most fun I've ever had in Genshin Impact. And in terms of fun factor for Yoi Mia, which is my main factor when I, when I pull for characters, she didn't feel fun. She didn't feel fun. I'm going to wait until her trial comes out, of course, before I say exactly if I will be pulling. Because I know a lot of people are going to be asking me if I'll pull for Yoi Mia or not. But for, for now, she didn't seem fun. And I feel like I'm now leaning towards I want to skip. Especially because we're now we're getting, you know, a free five-star bow character uh, in 2.1. So that's kind of cool, too. But what do you guys think about Yoi Mia? Her abilities, her skills, any any future synergies, like uh, theories that you could do. I could definitely see her being like synergy and support for maybe like even an Ayaka. So I mentioned that at the end, right? We pop her ultimate and then we swap over to Ayaka and we just keep causing reactions or doing our normal attack, whatever, and causing explosions and whatnot. But what do you guys think about Yoi Mia? Uh, if you guys did end up trying her out in the story quest, please let me know down below. Um, if you guys enjoyed her, if you guys are looking forward to pulling for her and stuff like that. If you found this video helpful or informative or anything like that, please do give it a thumbs up. It does help with the YouTube algorithm in terms of showing this video to other people, helping the channel grow, all that good stuff. And consider subscribing as well if you want to catch more uploads like these in the future. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.